Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me for 10 Minute Tuesday. I got Will on here today. Will, what's going on? Uh, all kind of tech issues this morning, but <laughs> we're all good, we're all good. We'll figure it out. Everything's looking smooth. Your stream is looking great. So man, thank you so much for taking time out today. No problem at all. It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, we've done a number of these 10 Minute Tuesdays. So Will, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, uh, I'm Will Sutton. I am a sort of core consultant with the Information Lab. I specialize in tools like Tableau and Ultrix. I've actually been a Tableau user for about 10 years now. That makes me feel like quite old. Uh, yeah, I've been using it for 10 years. I went on to win IMVIS in 2022. And then last year became Tableau Ambassador and Visionary. Wow. So that's such a journey. So consulting, Information Lab, all the way to Tableau. Uh, is the the champion and won it all and just all this great stuff but at some point you had to get your start so what really compels you to really get into data to begin with um i was thinking about this i think it's more like laziness than anything so i was working a job where i was having different spreadsheets and i would have to like look things up in one with the other i was doing doing my v lookup uh, or what happened was this is quite a laborious process of going and checking the numbers. So practicing like, what can I do with Excel to basically automate my job? That's what I ended up doing. So lo and hold, I made like a sort of small like automation solution to go and change my job uh, just to copy and paste in the end. So which was uh, which was a nice challenge, but also kind of like ruined the job for me. But. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of us in this industry have gotten in this out of automation and then we kind of work ourselves out of a job because we're too good. So it's like, all right, what else can I automate and, and process and, and get in a fashion where um, I'm not lazy, but I'm efficient. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, where, where are the opportunities from there? So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, so you had a number of jobs, I'm sure, from where you're at now, but, you know, not necessarily data related, but what has been your least favorite job that you've had to date? I've done quite a lot of jobs. I, some of them have been quite fun. Uh, that's when I went and worked on the building site. That was like completely different, but that was really fun. Uh, so I mean, like when I think back to least favorite, it was probably uh, when I worked in finance. So I think this is kind of teams for that kind of idea. Like, you know, you leave like school and you have this big dream, big ambition. You know, I was going to become a stockbroker. I was going to make a load of money and then retire at the age of 30. And what happened was I got to finance. I got into the stock brokerage and the job really wasn't for me. <laughs> so I, but I booked up that skill. So that job I was doing while I was automating my own job, that was, that was what I did in the stock brokerage. So yeah, my job was, I had to get there at half seven in the morning and then I was pretty much done by about nine o'clock. It wasn't really much else for me to do during the day. There wasn't <laughs> like any further opportunities to grow other than take an exam that lasts three years. So, so you know, I took a step out of that, found a different job. So I moved into financial research. Uh, so I still built on that, that industry, but that's when I was given Tableau as a tool to go and use and I thought, wow, it's kind of opened my eyes to what could be done and really helped me pivot into the job I am at the moment. But yeah, uh, I had to get out of that job to refine, but it did give me a lot to that initial job. It got me into London, got me a sector, got me a good amount of job experience on my CV. And then uh, from there, my destination was still, still unknown at that point, but I managed to get there in the end. Wow, that's like such a path from, you know, just starting to automate into where you're at now and just be like, ah, I should do something else. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely like I was just going for jobs that interested me at that point when I realized that data is this kind of skill set that you can all develop, but all kind of jobs, all kind of industries want this skill. So I was probably one of the few people that went from like stockbroking, trading like stocks and shares for people to then working at the BBC, which is like public sector broadcast in the UK. Uh, but the job came up, I was like, this is cool. Let's do this. <laughs> and, and I'm good because so you have the skills and data you could get there. Great, great. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So you, you had your path from where you're at, you know, BBC to, you know, not liking your job all the way to winning Iron Viz. So along the way, I'm sure you had your bumps and bruises. So what would you consider to be your biggest failure with quotation marks around failure? And what did you really learn from it? I, I, I 
generally try and fail quite a lot of the time like or try and try a lot of new stuff to fail but like fail in little chunks uh, so the biggest one i think when i look back is probably uh the way i um acted in the job you know as a data analyst you're asked to do quite a lot of things uh the things i really liked about the job sort of getting in the data set analyzing the questions understanding getting that data producing the report i really liked uh, but it was that next part of going and sharing the work with the stakeholders. I wasn't really keen for that. You know, I don't want to get up there in front of like eight people to go and scrutinize my work that I've worked really hard over. But, you know, introverted kind of guy. I know like I've analyzed this thing, all kind of details in it, but I didn't like doing that part. And I would always end up, my manager would then take it on for me. And what I slowly learned was that people didn't actually remember me doing the work. They just remembered my manager and associated the, the good work I had done with my manager. So they got more and more credit for work that I had done. And so when I, you know, I had gone for the short, like, oh, okay, I don't like doing this, uh, presenting stuff, so I won't do that. But then when I realized what it was doing to my career and like prospects, uh, I kind of had to change tact a bit and say, actually, no, I do want to be here. I do want to be in that room when the when the brief is given, when the stakeholder is there uh, from the start, because you you just like miss so much. You miss all the credit. You miss all the feedback, the good and the bad. So you don't really improve. And like, if you ever talk to someone else who got the feedback for you, it's it's not the same. Like it's kind of. The follow-up question they never ask you, like, oh, why didn't they like that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, like, no. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of that thing, I think, was, like, the biggest missed shot. Like, I should have been doing really from the, from the start. But, yeah, I really had to learn the hard way the importance of just being there, being present. And, you know, I may not be feel comfortable there, but I – was certainly much happy with the result in the end. Yeah. So I guess a follow up question to that. You mentioned that, you know, initially you didn't like presenting your work with critique and people looking at it, but then you're all the way in Ironviz. So like, what did you do to go from that to Ironviz? And what type of leap did that take internally to get you to be comfortable present on that type of stage? I don't really think anything kind of prepares <laughs> you for that. Uh, certainly, from my experience, when I, I received the notification I was going to be in, I was like, uh, honestly, quite terrified. What am I going to do? Like, I maybe like struggle presenting my work to 10 people in a company, but now I've got to do it to like thousands. It's like, I like, I worked in places where we didn't even have that many employees. So suddenly, like, this is the most eyes I'm ever going to get on my work. And it was actually quite a lot for me to process at the time. And I, I actually had to take some time away from like work and everything just to get some time for myself, just to sort of spend a bit of time in the countryside, just I'm just like working through that in my head. Stop thinking of it as such a like a big negative thing, but think a bit more about, well, if you are able to present at this kind of stage, like no other presentation is ever gonna scare you ever again like you know suddenly like i remember i was being like invited to like the like, london tableau user group to talk and it's like oh a few hundred it's like oh that's easy <laughs> oh, i can do that <laughs> suddenly you've done like five thousand a hundred oh, piece of cake so um yeah it was a really big challenge for me to sort of get get over that mentally and sort of think of it less as like frame it less as a problem more as like this is a real opportunity for me to like grow and develop so yeah i please went through it but yeah i certainly needed to take a bit of a time to get it in my head that this was the right thing for me to be doing and how i would go and tackle it from there so uh, i can't say that i was like like prepared or anything or felt like confident to go out there but suddenly you're just going and it's all good you know I still like always have like butterflies and like nervousness before any kind of like speaking kind of event just because I want you, you I think internally you just want to do a good job there so you're always going to have that but knowing like once you're going you're going and it'll all be good yeah. so that's incredible and I think you said something really good that is amazing. It's like once I've done something at this amount, you know, 5,000, 10,000, whatever, like these local 10, 200, 5, I was like, oh, piece of cake, you know, <laughs> you still want to be good, but it's crazy. Like the 
when you stretch yourself, how far you can really go. Um, and then when you come back down to a lower level, it's just like second nature. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's the same with anything. Like once you've like built a Sankey chart and Tableau, it's like, oh, bar charts are easy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Easy, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, so what is one piece of advice you'd give someone who's just starting out in their career? I think it's something that I, I think I only really just learned in the current job. It's uh, really understanding like, when you come into this company, it's understanding how best you can make an impact. That can be really hard to work out, or sometimes it's really obvious from the start. You're like, why are we not doing this? Like, why are we not doing this? Um, but even that, I've had times where I've entered at organizations and there's been major faults from the front that I've seen that we haven't been fixing, and I'll raise these, it won't happen, and we brushed off. And then we'll come back to it and say, oh, yes, we probably should have done that. So I think it's understanding, like, yes, where can you make an impact? Your skills come in to do the best what this company wants to do in terms of progressing. So sometimes as a data analyst, uh, for me, it wasn't a case of just just do run the numbers, but it's actually going and, like, question the people, go and actually be the one to sort of break into sort of doing something that you probably weren't being asked to do but those times that I did step in and do something actually made a huge benefit to the people I was working with like I remember one one time we had like a big customer segmentation project that was going on and my team was delivering this around the business in PowerPoint like we know we know there's better ways of doing this right and they would have to like rejig the PowerPoint every time to bespoke it for a different team and you, yeah you're there you're like Hey, I could build this kind of yeah. thing like, <laughs> like an interactive tool. And and then that like really like opened up the eyes that actually they could spend more time working on the important stuff, like answering the questions, preparing in, in better ways. Uh, and then, I mean, it also got me some time there as well. It's like, oh, I could present the interactive dashboard tool we've got here as well. So getting that data in front of people as well, which is, yeah what we need to be doing more of, rather than just like, hey, run the numbers. Is it good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, looks good. Great. Next one. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. All right. Will, where can listeners find you at online? Uh, yeah, I'm all over the place, really. I really don't. I haven't been quite consistent in any place, but uh, Twitter or X, as it wants to be called, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm on LinkedIn. I do a bit on Instagram, data.gram, you know, Wilson on LinkedIn, Wilson on Twitter. I'm also Wilson on YouTube as well. I've got a little new channel going, so of uh, early days, but yeah, we're getting there. Uh, so yeah, I'm all over the place, but yeah, Tableau Public as always will give you links to everywhere I'm at. So Awesome, awesome. And we'll have all his links in the description. So if you want to click follow, you heard him. He's starting out his YouTube page, so subscribe to his channel. It's great content. Follow him. Uh, Will, thanks so much for taking time out today, man. This was great. No problem. It was great to catch up anytime. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And thanks, everybody, for watching 10 Minute Tuesdays. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And we will talk to you all next week. Y'all have a great day. Mm -hmm.